patient. That's what he says to no, start the house. <laughs> Today's presenter is Christina Lambert. <laughs> Which of my iron chefs we try to tell? <laughs> the secret ingredient is Fish heads. <laughs> I love iron chefs. The best one I've ever seen is fish cheeks. What are you doing? Fish cheeks, that's the best part of the meat. The best part of the, the fish. If you have a big enough fish, cut that off. It tastes great. But you have to big enough fish. Or else there's nothing there. It's funny to watch a carbon out, too. It's like, it's a cheap meat. Why didn't you We always did that when we would fish for walleye. Well, Ken, my third black the day was talking about, he's starting to bow fish. Like for gar? Like yeah, alligator yeah, like gar? <laughs> like in Florida? Yeah, but he said he got all this stuff to try in this spring break. He got our license to sit in. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. I need to restring. I need to, yeah. The thing is, I used to always use a phone book to do that. And then it was like, I don't have a phone book anymore. Oh, I was using one. I would take the spool of line and run it through the phone book. Right, and so then when you reel, it just kind of goes back and forth. Yeah, we go to Anna Mountain I haven't been there yet since yeah, it opened. Really My parents stopped doing this. It's super expensive. There's nothing on sale yet. There's nothing new. There's no, they don't have like a clearance rack yet. I've only been to again. Again, Tina. Okay, we're going to get rolling again. Um, before we start with our next presentation, uh, how about a big thank you to Ms. Harris for uh, providing a very nice lunch. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from Christine Nemec. For Christine Nemec, for LA Cuisine, go cook. <laughs> All right. Hello, my name is Christine Nemec, and my topic for my senior project was my favorite topic. Food. I've always been <laughs> I've always been interested in food. In fact, my favorite things to do are to watch Food Network and to go grocery shopping. <laughs> um, so I knew I wanted to do my topic on food. Um, while watching Food Network, I've seen the chefs use these crazy ingredients that I've never heard of before. Um, they made things like chocolate and peanut butter stain and disc ice cream, which I thought was awesome. So I knew I wanted to find out more about these things. Um, so in my research. I hoped to find what these things are, um, how they're used, and how popular they are. I soon found that they're called molecular gastronomic ingredients, and that just means that they're used to experiment with the, um, the tr transit that happen during both physical and chemical transformations that happen while you're cooking. Um, in my research, I found several of these different ingredients. For example, um, agar agar, it is an ingredient um, extracted from algae, and it's, um, it's similar to gelatin. All you do is you mix it with whatever you would like to um, thicken. All of this isn't thickened in liquid. And so you mix it with whatever flavor you would like to thicken, and then you boil it, and once it cools and sets, depending on how much agar you added, you will get something from a jelly to a jello. Another ingredient is called um, tapioca maltodextrin, which is um, it's similar to flour. It's um, dextrose or a plant sugar. And what it does is it dehydrates um, whatever you mix it into. So this is how you would get the peanut butter sand. If you mix peanut butter and this tapioca maltodextrin, you will get peanut butter sand. Um, but not only in my research did I find out about these um, molecular gastronomic ingredients, but I also found out about molecular gastronomic um, techniques. And in these techniques, um, there I, I found um, something called um, a, an anti-griddle, which is a machine <laughs> with um, a metal top. And it gets very cold. And this is how you would get your um, ice cream discs. You just put the ice cream base on the anti-griddle and freeze um, Molecular gastronomy is used around the world, um, primarily in France and Spain. And um, the most popular restaurant is, well, was El Bulli in Spain. Um, they use molecular gastronomy in every single one of their dishes. And they were so popular that they received around a million um, reservation requests a year and only admitted 
around 8,000 of them. Um, it closed up around 2012, but they're supposed to be reopening this year sometime. Um, so going along with the food theme, I, well, I hope to go into the food industry later in life. So I wanted to do my internship at a restaurant. I um, completed my internship in the kitchen of the In That Willow Grove, which is a restaurant here in Orange. And um, my mentor was head chef Jason Daniels. Um, while there, I was responsible for the food prep for um, the breakfast and dinner services, depending on what day it was. And then during the breakfast and dinner services, I had to um, put together all of the amuse, which is just like a small free appetizer, appetizer, and the salads and the desserts. Um, while there, I learned a lot about being in a kitchen because I had taken culinary classes at the high school before, but I had never worked in a real kitchen before. So I learned a lot about how it actually is very stressful at times. But um, so um, I wanted to, going along with the food, I completed my community service with our culinary arts teacher, uh, Lori Rudolph. I went over to her classes and I helped her with her students while they were cooking and taking tests and things. And then um, while I was doing that, I was also baking brownies, blondies, and different cookies for sale. I sold them for around 50 cents to a dollar each. And so far, I've accumulated $200 for a scholarship that I'm making. I'm going to continue to raise money for the scholarship throughout the year. And at the end of the year, I plan to grant it to a graduating culinary arts student. Um, what I've learned about this project, it gave me a lot of a sense of responsibility because you, I was responsible for doing all of my work myself, and I procrastinate a lot. Um, and then, but most importantly, I learned about working in a kitchen because that's what I want to do later in life. Um, I had never really experienced it before, and um, so that helped me. My advice for upcoming um, food seniors is to find um, a topic that you're really passionate about because um, I know people from previous years who have procrastinated a lot and um, didn't get their work done until the very end. For me, um, I got, it was fun doing the work. Um, what I'm saying is it's a lot of work, but if you're passionate about each topic, you will enjoy it. So it won't seem like that. Um, Are, are these molecular gastronomic ingredients, are they readily available? Um, well, they're, I've found websites like online where you can get them. They're not, I haven't seen them in any grocery stores that I've been to, and they're not as popular in like the United States, but they are used. So I'm sure they're, you can find them probably online. Have you, have you cooked with them? Have you used them? I have not used anything other than gelatin, but my mentor, um, he has used them. Did you, I mean, have you have you tasted any dishes that use them? If you like the Food Network, who would you say is the most informative? Not entertaining, but which which one would you say teaches you the most about cooking? I would Not have just to, entertaining. Um, I would have to say I am Chef America. That's <laughs> 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 my personal fave. <laughs> um, because it teaches you while they're cooking, like everything that they do. Not so hard when we're in the is the best one. <laughs> okay. yes. Michael Simon is, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> so, when you talk about the, did you, when doing your research for this, did you run into like the science of gastronomy, like the people who actually like look at the chemical? Did you, did you run into any of that? Um, I found Hervé. This was the guy who like originated it, and he's from France, and. Um, he was working on, it's a big, like it's a wide topic for ingredients, and I don't know like how all of them work, but I just know that he was like the original. The science itself, yeah. And then do you um, need special equipment with these ingredients? I mean, you did mention the one thing that with ice cream so, that you them through. Well, that's, they're like two separate things. Oh. You don't need um, the anti brittle for any of the like the agar, agar, you could take peanut butter and the agar and just blend it together. 
Do you, know, do you know the other use for algae? Like in science class? <laughs> in science class? <laughs> it's a medium, right? In science, that you. Uh, it's what you grow. put in a petri dish to grow bacteria. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all always in crossword puzzles. So yeah. Don't eat it in your science yes. class. Yeah. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> okay.